Hey guys, good Thursday morning. Thanks for tuning in to our update here. We're here. I say we, I'm having some technical problems. Brandon is making magic happen over here. So we're gonna try to cover some of the stories that you guys are clicking on and sharing on khu.com and Facebook. But um, we're gonna see how this goes. I had a, many more stories to talk about, but you don't wanna stare at this the whole time. You wanna see the video and what we're talking about. And I just can't seem to pull those up right now, so my apologies. Um, we do have links to all the stories, though, if you wanna check those out, um, and you can do a little deeper dive on each of these. The one we're gonna start with, though, is a story that developed overnight, the hunt for Adam Curtis Williams, the man who is connected to a New Hampshire couple who was murdered in South Texas. He is back in Texas. This is uh, him arriving this morning. He was arrested in Mexico yesterday, if you guys remember this whole thing, so a couple weeks ago, the bodies of a New Hampshire couple were found um, buried on a beach on Padre Island, uh, in Corpus Christi area. And a couple of days after they were reported missing, oh, is my mic not working? It's working, it's just bad. Oh no, see, we're technically just um, challenged today. My apologies, now I got a double mic. Can you hear me now? All better. Okay, so backing up, we're talking about James and Michelle Butler. They hadn't been heard from since October 16th. They were reported missing on October, I'm sorry, since the 14th, reported missing on the 16th. And a couple days after that, investigators say this guy who you see here was seen on camera driving their truck and RV across the border into Mexico. So he was caught in Jalisco yesterday, um, extradited back to Texas. He was actually flown into Houston and then driven down to um, Kingsville. And that is where he is being held now. So this has all taken a number of turns just over the past couple of days when we you know, found out that um, they'd been identified and that their truck was missing and then that he'd been photographed crossing the border in the truck, then he was caught and now he's back. So um, I know this is a story that has a lot of interest because people have been um, really concerned and calling for justice for the, for the butlers, for the couple who was murdered. Now he, right now, is only charged with felony theft. They have not charged him with murder, although I suspect right now they're probably asking a good number of questions about how he knew the butlers and how he got a hold of their truck. All right, we are jumping around quite a bit today, um, again, because of the technical issues. So the next stop is this proposal from Kamala Harris that kind of wants to meld work schedules with school schedules. And you guys know the drill. If you have kids, it it's you're paying for childcare because school gets out at 2.30 or 3. You don't get off work until 5.30 or 6. Harris's plan basically wants to create an after-school environment where kids can stay until six every day. And you're gonna see headlines out there that say, Kamala Harris wants to keep your kid in school until six o'clock. That's, you should read the article. Um, Cause it's really about keeping campuses open and melding work and school schedules uh, so that working parents aren't forced to shell out so much for childcare every month. Cause boy, is it expensive. But one of the other, topics that has come up during this conversation is about whether this is solving a problem, the wrong problem. Some folks have pointed out that the real problem is we should be working, working parents should be working less than 40 hours a week, that the work week is just too much. And if we had more time with our kids, um, then the burden wouldn't fall to school. So you can read the whole proposal, it's multi-tiered, there's funding, how it would be funded and all that in there, but that's probably a bit too much to get into here. And then finally, I'm so glad Brandon created a solution so that we could share this story with you because I love it and I think it will make you smile Assisted Living Home um, has stood for years this in contrast this to Winona State University. A dorm, a senior dorm. Young and but old. College students are moving into an assisted living home in Winona, Minnesota. So it's the Watkins Assisted Living Home um, and it's right next door to Winona State University. And so now students can live there. And I think it's a great way to like bring 
generations together, generations that might not interact much otherwise, and I think they can really learn a lot from each other. Also, this is a story told by, by Boyd Hubert, who was just a phenomenal writer and storyteller, so I really encourage you to click that link and watch his version of the story, which is gonna be so much more eloquent and well told than um, my summary that is happening right now. Forecast time, it's about to get messy. Uh, later this morning, we're gonna see that cold front roll in. It's moving through Dallas right now, and you can see we have an 80% chance of showers, so grab that umbrella. If you're headed out, you're probably gonna get caught in at least one or two or five today. Um, you see the temperatures cool down quite a bit. We hit that high of 75, I think, already today, and the temperatures are just gonna keep dropping. And uh, by Sunday, should clear out a little bit. High of 68, looks pretty good. Um, I'm not even, I don't even know if we want to dive into the comments because I know this update has been a mess this morning, but Brandon, anything, anything nice that someone would like to share? Uh, people seem to not um, be complaining about the update, so I guess we're doing okay. Yay, okay, thank you guys for yeah. rolling with me today. Today has just not worked. It's not worked. It's been a day. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, p a lot of people are voicing um, their uh, I guess happiness that um, we finally have this person of interest in custody um, yeah. in these Padre murders. Um, I want to mention they're also holding the woman who was seen in that image at the border with Williams. Yeah. Uh, so she hasn't been charged with anything, but again, I bet they're asking her a couple questions. That's good. Jane Downs uh, just asked if we had her um, uh, info about her, so that's good. Um, have a couple good mornings here. Good morning, Debbie. Um, Sue is very happy about this last story saying party at the senior living center. Isn't it so cool though? I think that is a great way. You know, there have been instances where like kindergarten classes are interacting with seniors, like just different ways for those generations to come together. Cause I, I mean, do you spend a lot of time with your grandparents? Uh, I spend a, a good portion of my time with my grandparents, but they're very close and uh, you know, they're easy to hang out with, but. Yeah. I understand definitely if some people have a little more trouble. Um, I can just imagine a couple of seniors being RAs though for college seniors and that sounds hilarious. That would be awesome. That's a I think that should be a TV, TV show. show. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we had the idea. Actually Brandon had the idea. So don't don't try to steal it. Don't go writing a script and pitching it to Hollywood. That's that's Brandon's idea. I know um, my grandma is probably watching my dad's mom cuz she's um, she's great about watching and my grandfather on my mom's side isn't but I learned so much from them and just hearing their stories and um, I don't know about about life before and my generation was the one that came up we went from analog everything to digital everything you know when I was growing up we had a party line Brandon do you know what a party line is I do know what a party line is <gasps> okay so if you're watching and you don't, that is when you live in the middle of nowhere back in the day and the phone company didn't think it was worth it to put different lines up for every house. So you all shared a phone line. And as I understand it, my I was really young at the time. My parents um, you know, had a, had a time where they could make phone calls. Everybody kind of had their time. And uh, when the phone rang, it rang for everybody. This was really weird. Now we all carry a phone around with us. And that's how much things have changed in my lifetime. My grandma and my grandpa, I mean, my grandpa graduated from a one room schoolhouse. Well, he went through eighth grade in a one room schoolhouse. He ended up graduating from Roseburg High School um, and went on to help with the Apollo missions. He worked for an aerojet company in, in California. So, I mean, like, think about how much our lives have changed. Theirs is just crazy. Right. My grandparents have lived in this area uh, for about 50 years. Wow. Um, so, in ac actually in the Iowa Colony. So they've lived down the road and they've seen the encroaching, you know, when they first got to Iowa Colony and built their house in the 70s, um, before that they lived in the second ward, there was nothing out there at all. They were, the closest thing was 20 miles away and Houston was 30 miles away. And now you can basically see Houston off their front now porch. Now it's a suburb. Yeah. Um, I have my friend Ginger, is a little bit older and she remembers Cinco Ranch. It was like a gas station. Yeah. There was a gas station out there. There was nothing. And now you look at it, it is pretty crazy. Yeah. So this is a good reminder. 
call your grandma, call your grandpa, you know, call that neighbor who's a little bit older, ask them some questions. Because they always have great stories, always. I always regret, um, Laverne Murphy was a, was a gentleman who lived up the road from me growing up. And his stories about settling our little community of Umqua and all of the different hazelnut orchards that came up. He every week would send out an email with the history. Anyway, I'm going, I'm going way off, but it's worth it to talk to your elders because they have fun stories. Okay, that's it. Uh, thank you for bearing with us through the technical issues. Thank you to Brandon for saving the day and letting us share that story about uh, the dorm in Minnesota with you. But uh, there's another update at 2.15. We'll be back here tomorrow. Hopefully everything will go smoothly then. Have a good day.